So what is production scheduling? Okay. Simply is either deciding how the field, how much the field will produce in time, right? How will be the rates of oil or gas, okay? But also not only deciding, because I can decide up to a certain point, also, also predicting, forecasting, okay? So you have the two components. So let's, let's type that here so that we re remember production scheduling. So that is deciding or forecasting also rates of, and typically we say it's is the we are most interested in 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 the do, in the you know the, the the dominant phase, okay? Which we call, for example, could be oil or could be gas if it's a gas reservoir or oil reservoir, oil field, right? But we also want to know, so we decide on these two, but actually we want to know the how the rates of the associated products, okay? Products. If it's a gas field, that will be oil and water. But if it's an oil field, it will be gas and water. And we are going to see now why that's very, but that's extremely critical. That's very important. I want to know also how these rates and associated products during the life of the field. Okay. And be, uh, be aware here, I want to highlight these two things. Decide, sometimes I can decide, I can define how much I want to produce, but sometimes simply I just have to forecast, okay? I have to predict. Okay. So let's talk about production modes. There are two ways in which I can produce a field, okay? One I call <coughs> basically two ways to produce a field. Okay. One of them I call production mode A, okay. or we call it also plateau production, then the other one is called production mode B. Okay. Or also known as decline production. So if you were going to plot with time how the rate of the phase, okay, the rate of the preferred phase, let's say it could be oil or it could be gas, depending what kind of field you have, with time, okay. This first mode has, of course, it might have some early production that is building up. We will see that a bit later, okay. Might have some early, just let's, let's neglect that for now. And we have a period where the production is relatively constant, and then at some point it starts to decline. Okay. While in the decline production, like the name states, simply we have a decline from the beginning. Okay. And remember, of course, that's the plan. Usually we put it very nice, very simple, but if you go and actually produce a field in one of these modes, actually probably will be a lot of up and downs, okay? And then also the same thing for the decline, okay? So that's the real, actually, when I manage to produce the field and, and the projected or the calculated probably will be a very smooth line, okay? Simply, you will see now you have, hopefully we have time today to see, you will get to operate a, a virtual field and you will see a bit how difficult it is, okay? To keep on a straight line. Okay, and the same thing for the client. So why, so how do I decide which one to use? Plateau production or decline production? So depending on the product we have, 
So if it's typically is used, for example, for gas fields, with, and very important, with a contract, okay? Why? Because I, m I have to ensure the people, depending on this gas, either for heating, either for power generation, they have to make sure that they are getting this gas, okay? They have a long plan, they want to operate for the next 10 years, 20 years, and they want to make sure they are receiving the gas, okay? So they have a contract, you're obliged to give some, some amount of gas, okay? What else? So let's put here the word, so it's like big, medium reservoirs. Okay, that's what you are saying before, that is some volume, okay, that is actually significant enough to, to, and we'll see that goes to the second part, which is, that's usually a standalone development. That requires, wait, that means that it requires its own facilities, offshore structure, okay, etc. Okay, and we are going to see and go a bit into the economics. I'm going to give some comments, but basically, if, for example, you make a platform, you want it to, to be producing or to be using those that that will be my capacity, right? I have to build my facility to process this amount of oil and this amount of gas. So if I try to operate like that, that facility, I build it and probably will be used only the first second of the first year of production, okay? Which really doesn't make much sense. So if really, if I make standalone facilities, software structure, I make a big investment, I want it to be operating for a long time at that capacity. So usually, me, big, medium size, when it's gas, usually if I have a contract, if it's uh, also big, medium size gas field, I, I operate in plateau rate, and it's usually for standalone development. Now, what about this guy? The guy to the right. Okay, if we say, well, the contrast really it's the, the philosophy here is to produce as much as possible as early as possible. And we will see now that makes actually a lot of sense from the point of view of the economy, okay? Because all every revenue or every oil and gas that we s sell later in time, you know, is going to be discounted. <coughs> it's going to wor be worth less. Okay, so I am interested to recover as much as possible, as early as possible. But you know, there are a few things we have to see there. What else usually is used for satellite developments? Okay, satellite to either existing fields. Okay, that use existing infrastructure. Okay, like for example, I have one field, stat field, or I have an existing field. Okay, and that field has been produced, had to be developed with its own facilities, its own installation and then at some point it's entering into decline, okay? Initially it was design, design rate, okay? For that, it was designed for that particular rate. But it has started to decline, therefore you have spare capacity here. Okay, at that particular point in time. Okay.
Therefore, that particular discovery that you have, okay, which will be your f new field, if it's small enough that you can produce it to that existing field, simply you can connect it, and then you can use the spare capacity, and then you can produce as much as possible, okay? The, given that you have the capacity to produce like that, okay? Yeah, so one thing we have to keep in mind, at least for mode A, okay, so let's, let's put it here. There is a relationship between plateau height and plateau duration. Okay, and what is that? What do you think the longer the plateau? Okay, let's say, let's assume the base case, okay, like we had before. What happens if I decide for some reason to produce more? The plateau height to be bigger. Okay, plateau height, I'm referring this guy here. Okay, that's what I say, the plateau height. Okay, smaller what? It should be, yeah, maybe drop fast, I don't know. But the main thing is that it should be shorter, right? Okay, that intuitively, you think that if I produce with a higher rate, it will be shorter. And maybe, what you said, maybe it drops sharper, okay? Or if I decide to produce for, for with a, a s smaller plateau height, then I will be producing for longer time. Okay? Uh, but maybe I ask you one thing. So at this time of abandonment, okay, when I reach here, let's say I have defined as my plateau for abandonment or my rate for abandonment, okay, that usually is the rate at which the costs are become equal to the revenue, okay, in which I'm, if I keep producing from that point, I will be in probably negative, okay. At that point, maybe I decide to abandon the field. So that's Q, let's call it here Q, abandonment. Okay. So what will be, you think, what will be the produced, uh, the total produced volumes of oil or, or gas that I have for the three strategies? Okay, should be the same. So that means the area, okay, that I have under the curve, that's how much I have produced, right? If you say the NP, okay, that's cumulative production. Okay, cumulative production is the integral from zero to any time T of the rate that I have, either gas or oil, okay, DT is counting from the beginning, okay? So that means it's basically the area under the curve, okay? So for the first alternative, it will be all of these, right? And if I say until abandonment, okay, until abandonment, how do I call this NP? NPU, right? NP ultimate. That's at abandonment, NPU, okay? So it's not that I'm trying to recover, probably I will, I will be able, unless there are some, we will see now that there are some technical constraints, okay, why, why um, I don't want to produce such a high plateau rate. But basically, let's, let's see, the area under the curve, under this curve here, okay? And also under this other curve here, I'm going to make a mess. Okay, should be the same, basically. Okay, what I total, recovering total, sh are usually more or less the same. So that means that this area, let's put it here.
okay, is equal to this area and it's actually equal to this area. So how do I decide, let's see, how do I decide a bit what plateau, and you're going to have exercise later in the course on that, but how do I decide which plateau height to use, okay? One of the things, sorry, what's your name? Alpita. Pita? Alpita. Alpita, okay. So one of the things that you mentioned was that you have a contract, right? You have a commitment to deliver some amount of, and that's very typical for gas, okay? So for gas, plateau height and also length okay is is given okay is given by a contract okay sometimes uh, you can produce more gas if you have or depending on the length they want to have contract of 20 years 10 years five years and depending on that you can give more or less gas okay but you have to know really to know well your field. However, for oil, okay, there are some things. So, or also for both, for oil and gas. Okay. One of the things is that usually there is a requirement, at least in Norway, by the authorities. to reach certain recovery factor, okay? So they say, well, at least in the average, in the Norwegian continental shelf, I have a recovery factor of so much. You have to aim to reach that recovery factor. So how does the plateau rate affect, you know, why changing the plateau rate can have some effect on recovery factor? If you look at a very simplistic, assuming, you know, we have one well producing more or less, okay, we have water layer, and the gas layer, and that will, let's say, is an oil, okay. If you are, that well is producing in situation two, let's call this number two, Let's put numbers, one, two, and three, okay. If it's producing in two, probably will have some, it will be producing a certain rate, okay. When you try to produce it at one, okay, you can do two things. You can increase the number of wells, but that will be expensive, okay. You're drilling, adding more cost to the field, or you can simply increase the rate of that well, okay. But you have some physical limit at which you can increase it, okay. If you increase it too much, you start having coning, right, from the gas from the gas layer. You start to have cusping or also coning from the water layer. Okay, you might have also problems with the stability of the formation. You might start to produce a, too much sand production. Okay, so it's it's uh, so usually higher rates can cause so it's a uh, high. GOR, okay, high gas production, high water cut, okay, which is not good for recovery. If you have a channeling between the gas layer and the oil layer, then you are going to leave some oil behind, okay, which is not desirable. You can also cause sand production, okay, and you can also cause, in ex very extreme cases, a collapse of the f of the near well bore formation, okay. So you don't want if that's a constraint you don't want, and that can affect your recovery factor. Of course, you want to get more and more. You want to maybe produce in one, close to one, without adding more wells, okay? Because that's going to increase the cost. So really, <clears throat> okay? So the main, the most robust, or the way it is done to define an economic analysis has to be made. Okay. 
unless you're bound by contract, right? But always you have to make economic analysis to decide on the plateau rate, okay? So higher plateau, gives you a uh, higher revenue, right? Okay. And why is that? Because if that we will see later, but usually we use an equation called, uh, we use an indicator called NPV, which is net present value. Which is the NPV is the sum of from year equal one, that's indicator for year, to the total number of years that you have in the project of the cash flow of that particular year, that CI is the cash flow, and the cash flow is the revenue of that particular year minus the expenses. Okay. Divided by, very important, this money case okay, happening at that particular year. Okay, I am spending on dollars in 10 years from now or five years from now, and I'm earning in dollars of 10 years from now. So to be able to sum this money, in different times, I use the discount uh, discount factor, discounting, which is 1 plus some rate, okay, C to the power of I, okay? And that's what we call the discounting rate, this guy here. Okay? And the discounting rate, depending, it depends on each company, is like an average they have for projects in the same area, okay, compared to if they do something else with the money, okay? If they go with the money, they will invest in this field and simply put it some other place, they, they should get better in the field, okay? They should get a better rate in the field. So that typically is a number between maybe five, if it's very low, it can go all the way to 15, okay? But simply it's a number between these two. So if I'm going to use it in the equation, I use 0 0.05 all the way to 0 0.15. Exactly, the revenue here will be, so here let's introduce some um, delta NP or QP, okay, let's call it QP, delta QP in that particular year. So that's the production of, in this case, oil or gas in year I, okay? And I multiply that by the price of the product, and that can be the price of one particular year, price of that particular product in year I. So how, how are we sure that it's more profitable if we produce more in the beginning? What if the I'm going I'm going to that point okay so let's see let's assume that you have like you said you have three years okay so or I don't know some yeah I'm making a bit more complicated but let's see where we end up okay so initially the first years you have some of course you have is you start getting revenue just let's say year when you start production okay so let's say it takes you five years to build your field, okay, to build your offshore structure, and then only after year five, you start production, yes? Okay, so initially, during the first year, you, you'll have expenses, okay, which are, we call, uh, let's call it for now just expenses, okay? That will be for year, let's say, one to five. I have no revenue, okay? And then I have to start having for year one, okay? for year, so, sorry, five. What interest rate do we use for this example? Okay, let's use 0.7, okay, something in the middle. Here, year five, and you have some delta, QP times the price of year, of year five, okay? The price of oil of year five, 
minus the expenses of year five. Okay? This will be expenses related to the operation of the field. So we call it OPEX of year five. Okay? Plus, then we have delta QP of year six, PO of year six minus the OPEX of year six. Okay? Divided by one plus 0 0.07 to the power of five at six, right? And so forth. Yeah? That's, I'm, I'm, I'm decoupling this equation. So that equation tell me, told me I have to sum revenue minus expenses. Initially, during the first years when I'm building the field, actually that number will be negative, okay? And it will be very negative. But after, let's say maybe year five or six, depending when I start, let's put here a note, that's when I start production. Okay. And I have the sum. If we are operating the field in plateau rate, okay, this number will be fixed how much I produce every year. Right. Let's make, for a test, let's make, a, as a test, let's make a plot of Okay, let's call this, this, um, so say year, okay, and then we say one, two, three, and we can make it maybe for 15 years, that field will produce for 15 years, and let's plot that, um, to the power of the year, okay. Okay, so you see that dramatically starts dropping down. I know, for example, if I, I'm producing in plateau mode, right? I have the same volumes from here, let's say, to year 10. The revenue that will come from this, from, from what I produce in year 10, will be half the value of what I get if I produce it in year one, okay? And let's say what you were saying, your question, how much the price has to be different from here to compensate by that, okay? If you have here $60 per barrel, here you will need to have twice, okay, 120. So it will be a big jump simply to justify producing more during at the later stage, okay? Of course, if you have, you are a, not magician, but you are, you know, a, you have your crystal ball and you can see exactly when you have this spike, you, but you, then you won't be sitting here probably, okay? <laughs> You will be making business with with Bill Gates or with some someone else. Okay, so the point is that the discounting makes sense no matter what the price variation is. It makes sense to produce. So let, let's put that here. Due to discounting, Let me just put that because I think that's uh, very sh kind of shocking to see this, how they change. And if you use a higher interest rate, it uh, will be even uh, bigger. Okay, so here we have, uh, it's one over 1 plus c to the power of i. Okay, the discounting factor. We call it sometimes df. Okay. So, what is, besides, you know, the technical constraints, the EOR, the coning, what is inhibiting us from, from producing the highest rate as, the, the highest rate as possible? What is, what is, uh, if we are basing our decision on this indicator, this NPV, what is inhibiting from simply produce everything in decline mode, okay? I don't care, I simply produce what we said here, we have our facilities, 
we produce as much as possible, then we make sure this discounting doesn't damage us, okay? It doesn't make too much harm, okay? We're taking a break soon, so just try to hold hold tight. Okay, the facilities, right? You see there the expenses. That is something that's also affecting the NPV, right? What happens if I have to make a bigger plan? I have to make a bigger platform, okay? If I have to increase the plateau, the number of wells that I have will be more, okay? So you have a trade-off. If I increase the plateau rate, this guy will be bigger simply because I'm producing earlier. I'm recovering that earlier, okay? Especially if I use a constant oil price, okay? But if I make the plateau higher, then I have to make my facilities bigger simply to take up that rate, to process that rate, okay? So this will become very negative, this will become very positive, and you have to find simply an equilibrium point where this is maximum, okay? So these expenses is Let's put it here. So that is wells, that is processing facilities. Okay, that is the platform. And everything has, so it has, um, it is like a, you know, rolling ball effect. So if I, if plateau rate is higher, Okay, then I probably need bigger processing facilities. I need to have more or bigger separators. I need to have more pumps. I need to have more compressors, bigger processing facilities. Okay, view because I have bigger processing facilities, they are more heavy, okay, they are heavier. So then I need to have a bigger offshore structure to hold all of this weight. So then I have to big offshore structure. Okay, and also I might need, because of the problem that I mentioned before, you need to have more wells. Okay, therefore this expense, expenses term become very negative. Okay, they start to increase and they become very negative. Also, that affects a bit the OPEX. Okay, it's not the same to have a platform where you it's of certain size. You need, for example, 50 people. Then you increase the size. You need maybe 100 people to operate this plant. So that's also affecting your OPEX. Okay, but also revenues become bigger okay, because of the discounting. I'm increasing this guy and then I'm getting because the discount factor is less so I'm getting more more revenue. Okay, So usually to decide plateau rate I have to make an economic evaluation. Okay, And that's especially true for oil fields, some gas fields, but usually for oil fields Okay, but we have some, we will see now we have, after the break, we have some rules of thumb, okay? So people start with some, historically they have had many, many fields, they have produced them with some plateau ratio between what I have in place and the height of the plateau, and they use the starting number, and then they change it up and down to see if I can get better value, okay? So that's that's the way to, to, to do it. Um, Unless, you know, some exceptions or an exception, okay, where we don't want to make more money, it's maybe something could be blending, okay? You have a crude which is very heavy, 
and if I simply ship it the way it is, it will have a very low value in the market. Okay? But then I might have a neighboring field, which is very nice, very good oil. If I mix these two together, I'm able to sell it at a better price okay? and, and faster. So then I want to use a proper ratio to make sure that the product has you know, exactly the, the API or the, 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 the characteristics that I want, okay? Blending. That is called crude blending, blending of crude. Um, we have different ways to produce the field, plateau and decline. If we only look at the revenue, really the decline makes most sense. Okay, we want to produce as much as possible, as early as possible. But you know, we have um, production mode A either for gas fields. I have a contract. But also, the economy simply tells me that I cannot produce in this mode. It's not profitable. Okay? Simply because the NPV or the indicator we use to quantify the economic value of a field, it has two parts. It has the expenses, okay? that depend very much on how much I want to produce. And we have also the revenue. This part will be improved. Actually, here, revenue is, is only this part. Okay, You have also the operational expenditures and we have to make find an equilibrium a balance okay simply some people try to maximize that NPV by try, trying different rates okay remember each iteration might be quite costly because when you're deciding on the field by the way when is this evaluation happening this plateau height length evaluation let's go to our chart that we have here okay where is that happening okay it's in this phase right but basically in these two phases okay remember from dg2 everything is more or less locked so i can make some sh small variations but not that many so really in these phases i have to try different plateau rates see the length see how much that affects the economy and simply it's not that i change and i see immediately the result okay usually remember i have different teams one of them on facilities one of them on reservoir Pro that's the the department that actually generates production profiles so they send it to the guys in facilities they make the calculation they send it to the guys in the e economy they make the npv calculation and finally that goes to the manager okay now the man manager thinks, oh, what happens if we increase the plateau rate? Then you have to tell it to the reservoir guys. Reservoir guys have to go to the processing guys. Processing guys have to go to economy guys. And finally goes to the manager, maybe one month after. Okay, So it's not that we change a number and then we see the variation. Okay, So as part of the complexity of this process, and the industry now is trying to make a platform or like a digital system such that they can change something here and it will propagate through the system and you will see the impact okay it's not so easy because many things require a lot of manual work okay reservoir engineers they have to be very careful when they set the well conditions and they have to be very careful when they generate if it makes realistic uh, um, projection the guys in processing they have to size a lot of equipment okay they have to start sizing if you change the rate you have to change the separator size that affects the pump that you need that affects the compressor that you need that cascades down okay and then the cost estimation guys they have to start okay now i have a bigger separator i have to increase change the thickness i have to change the power that i need and then that affects again the economy so it, it's it's all a, a, like a chain of events okay in this course we are going to make a simple approximation all using approximate equations but it's simply to that you see the effect that it has, okay? So you have to do that yourself, like if you were your own company with all of these departments, okay? But remember, in real life, it might take you change something and everybody's going to hate you, okay? Because you, yeah? For the oil price, do we take an average of based on history matching over the 10 years, for instance, or do we take the current price and we put it as if it's gonna be stable? There are different approaches, okay? Sometimes you use like, um, average for all your assets sometimes you use the price of the when you plan to start production sometimes you try to add some variation but 
basically it's a static price and that's something that it's a bit uh, company dependent okay, okay? The, this economic department they take some assumptions depending on what they think is going to be the projection and then might take an average or they might take the price that will be in five years from now they might take the current price they might take some price from other projects so it's uh, it really company dependent so we will receive okay. the assigned price if we're planning we receive it from the well actually you receive the NPV if you are a reservoir engineer or a, are a manager okay so you will receive simply the NPV and the, the assumption okay but here in this course we are going to try to make everything ourselves, okay? So that's why we have to take some approximations of, of cost, approximations of, of, of everything, okay? Yeah, uh, so, okay, so rule of thumb for first iteration on plateau rate for oil, we typically say we want to produce 10% of NPU per year okay NPU sometimes I say remember this is cumulative ultimate cumulative production and this is at abandonment okay that's how much I will produce which of course there is a lot of uncertainty in this number Sometimes you may have heard it, not in SP terminology. SP terminology, they try to use just one capital letter and everything else should be subscript. Okay. But sometimes you might see also has TRR, which is total recoverable reserves. Okay. So if I have, let's say, so an, an example, I have a reservoir of 180 million barrels okay standard barrels that's the uh, that's the uh, let's say the n initial oil in place okay that's okay sometimes we use in non np sp nomenclature original oil in place Okay. So how do we calculate the plateau rate from this number? Okay. We need first to calculate MPU. What is the relationship between MPU and N? RFU, ultimate recovery factor. And to be consistent, we have to use subscript times the N. Right? That's how much of what I have in place I will be able to recover. Okay. And there is actually quite a big speculation about that number, but you can say from the area, the location, the properties, more or less we know that number will be in a range. Okay, In the North Sea probably will be something between 0.3 and 0.5 okay, for oil. Okay, So you pick a number. What number do we pick here? For our N? 0.4? Okay. So NPU will be 0.4 of 180. How much is that? Seventy two? Yep. Okay. And now we say we want to produce ten percent of that each year in the in plateau production. Okay? So what else do we need? Plateau rate is NPU times 0 0.1. Okay, and each company might have a slightly different number. That tells me how much I produce in a year, right? And then I have to divide by the number of days. Plateau rate is usually the units are standard cubic meter per day or standard barrels per day. So I have to find the number of days in a year, okay? But not only that, the number of effective days of production in a year, okay? I usually, I'm not able to produce all days in a year, and that I have what I call the uptime, okay? So number of producing days 
in a year. Okay. That it's uh, sometimes the uptime is either simply the number of days I produce in a year, okay, or it's also given as a percentage. I have 80% uptime, 90%, 95%, and that means it's, uh, for example, 95% uptime. That is 0 0.95 times 365. Okay? And the companies, they have their own records, they have their own, you know, depending on the, which part of the globe they are, they know more or less, you know, if weather, uh, personnel, uh, all kind of things, they have already some idea what is that number in average. Okay? So let's assume for our case will be 0.9, okay? And here we have 72 e to the 6 times 0 0.1. How much is that in barrels per day? You might need Excel. advanced calculation okay okay so we end up with 20 20,000 barrels okay per day plateau I think so which is quite 21,900. Okay, which is relative, which is actually quite a, a small reservoir. Okay, so it's a relatively small reservoir. Okay, but that means if you make some assumptions of how much you see the plateau rate of a field then you uh, uh, make some assumptions, you can more or less estimate how much is in place, okay? You can try to speculate. If you assume recovery factor, if you assume uh, uptime, if you assume a lot of things, actually you can try to speculate, okay? The biggest part on speculation is this number, that they use that as a starting point, but then they switch it up and down to maximize NPV, okay? For gas, that clear? For gas, typically, because we want to usually gas with, with a contract and, you know, we want to have it for, we know, we don't want to reduce the plateau, but simply we want to be on a contract. So it's typically something between 2 and 5% of, and gas we say GPU, okay? Q is for both phases, either oil or gas. So let, let's make that comment here. Q is either oil or gas. N is for oil, okay, and G is for gas, 